2021 was yet another triumphant year for fans of 2D music projects. Rock, pop, acapella, K-pop, R&B, heavy metal and visual K-rock made their way to the spotlight. From projects with an all-star cast to those betting heavily on new, up-and-coming talents, in this episode you'll get to know a bit about some of the most buzzworthy 2D music projects launched in 2021. Let's kick off this episode of Say You Lounge. Welcome to Say You Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is new 2D music projects that took the spotlight in 2021. If you've been following the news about new 2D music projects, you may be thinking to yourself, this episode will be incredibly long. And that's because there were at least 12 new 2D music projects to launch in 2021. Some of those explored music in refreshing ways in 2D music projects, others gave a unique spin to an already winning formula. There were 2D music projects flaunting star-studded casts and others being more modest while betting on up-and-coming stars or even underrated yet incredibly skilled singers among male CU. From rock to pop, EDM, R&B, ballads, a cappella and heavy metal, in 2021 fans of 2D music projects got to experience a lot of variety and have plenty of unique and interesting projects to choose from. Alpella If there is one project that has been the talking town in 2021, it's Alpella. The 2D mixed media project brought to the spotlight the beauty of the voice with Sayu performing for the very first time a cappella songs within a 2D music project. Aopella is an original project built on the themes of youth and a cappella. The project counts with two groups, Lil Happy and Fame, that have completely different approaches to a cappella music, counting with unique lineups. Lil Happy is the upbeat, crystal clear and incredibly delicate a cappella group, comprised mainly of tenors and baritones. Their music gives off a youthful vibe that fits really well with the whole concept of this project. Listeners will find on vocals Ryoto Saka, Ryohei Kimura, Tetsuya Kakihara, Ken and Tomoaki Maino. Fame is an R&B-ish a cappella group. They do have instances in which they channel barbershop a cappella or even add a bit of gospel to their performances which makes them, at least for me, the most exciting group in this project. Their lineup is packed with highly technical singers covering all vocal ranges, tenor, baritone and bass, which leads to memorable performances with a lot of power, a rich bass sound and some sprinkles of allure on top. The group has Toya Nagatoshiuki, Yuki Ono, Wataru Urata, Takuya Sato, Daiki Hamano and Shugo Nakamura. This group has a perfect balance that makes them incredibly consistent. In 2021, both groups participated in two CDs, releasing two original songs per group, as well as covered several popular J-pop and J-rock songs that brought a lot of attention to this project. If there is a project that was buzzworthy, at least in the first half of 2021, it was Aopella. Tokyo Color Sonic Another buzzworthy project in 2021 is Tokyo Color Sonic. The ambitious mixed-media franchise launched by Sprout and Coloration features a star-studded Seiyu cast on top of its refreshing premise. The franchise counts with an 8-character cast, with characters split into four different buddy units of singer plus songwriter. The franchise has four teams of singer and composer, these present unique dynamics and depending on the vocals and music genres present in each song, fans have gotten to experience exceptional performances. Team 1 consists of the face of the project, Arashi, voiced by Shoya Chiba, and Sora, voiced by Yuto Uemura. Team 2 consists of Yori, voiced by Soma Saito, and Haruhi, voiced by Yoshiki Nakajima. Team 3 consists of Toa, voiced by Gakuto Kajiwara, and Mirai, voiced by Hyohei Kimura. 
and Team 4 consists of Kairi, voiced by Shunsuke Takeuchi, and Kagura, voiced by Takuya Gucci. Each team released the CD in 2021, and as a whole, the franchise released its theme song, Begin on Buddy, performed by the vocals of the franchise, Shoya Chiba, Soma Saito, Gakuto Kajiwara, and Shunsuke Takeuchi. This really is a dream lineup that I believe ended up being a bit overshadowed by odd mixing in most of the songs released this year. It's hard to appreciate vocals with the instrumental blasting over them, almost completely covering tricky vocal sections or undermining an emotional performance by the cast. There's a lot of potential for this project and lots of good ideas going on, but it does seem that although Tokyo Color Sonic has been attracting attention on social media, that hasn't translated at all to their CD sales that have been completely underwhelming. With a special live event taking place in 2022, featuring the whole main cast, I'm hoping something new and exciting, quite possibly a new CD series, may be announced and those mixing quirks are ironed out to put the focus on the vocals instead. Still, if you want to check a unique 2D music project that isn't about idols and brings rock, pop and electronica to the spotlight, Tokyo Color Sonic is well worth your time. Station Idol Latch When it comes to unique concepts for 2D music projects, Station Idol Latch doesn't fit the bill. It has both idols and channels a bit of those vibes from the Miracle Train anime. Still, there's some novelty to this project. Station Idol Latch is the name of the mixed media franchise created by Aoi Pro, Amuse and Origamix, supervised and in collaboration with JR East. This franchise counts with a 30-character cast, with characters representing the 30 stations in the Yamamote Line, iconic train line that circles central Tokyo. Each character has its design and personality inspired by each of the 30 neighborhoods. Station Idol Latch is going to count with anime, manga, games, novelizations, music CDs, concerts, special events, among many other things. Then the cast includes some veteran seiyuu, with Kazuhiko Inoue having a role with the spotlight on him, something that is usually rare for projects that bet, first and foremost, on music as its selling point. Still, you have a healthy mix of veteran seiyuu, stars and up-and-coming seiyuu, so if you're into pop, dance music or even a bit of rock, the Station Idol Latch franchise may be quite the interesting pickup. Charisma House The oddball of 2021 is undoubtedly Charisma House, but you also can't deny how much hype there is around it since it was announced that Evil Line Records is its creator. There's no simple way to even start explaining what this project is about. It is weird, and if you're into weird, unconventional projects, I believe this will be up your alley. Charisma House is the name of a new 2D music project created by Evil Line Records, music label best known for housing the Hypnosis Mike franchise, with an original idea by Dazed. The project has the tagline, just ordinary boys, but all characters do have their eccentricities, as shown in the sarcastic debut song Mecha Mecha Charisma by Shichini no Charisma, group comprised of all seven cast members, Yuki Ono, Masahiro Yamanaka, Katsumi Fukuhara, Kenta Osoda, Hyuga Saku, Genki Okawa and Tomohisa Ashizume. There is still not much out there about this project, but it is starting to shape up to be quite the ride for its fans. Gamdol Gambling seems like it has been a big theme in 2D projects, not necessarily related to music. However, in 2021 there was one 2D music project that decided to embrace the dangers of gambling with music, and thus Gamdoll was launched. Gamdoll is an original mixed media project that puts in the same stage idols and gambling. The project follows the idol group Gambit through voice dramas plus music releases. Gambit is a five-member idol group led by Sho Mikado, voiced by Junta Terashima, 
The group's lineup includes as well Hibiki Togo, voiced by Shoya Chiba, Luke, voiced by Yuki Sakakihara, Yusei Kanagi, voiced by Jin Ogasawara, and Riito Kise, voiced by Taito Ban. And in October 2021, the group released their first single, Boku Cross Kimi Checkmate. The single explored pop and hip-hop, giving two different sides of the group that fits perfectly with the dark twist to the franchise's story. Despite the exciting lineup, I feel like the lack of exposure, for example for not making the single available on streaming platforms, was in a way responsible for part of the lack of interest by most fans of 2D music projects. The project was also unlucky as hell to be announced in the exact same week as Livas, a project that gathered a lot of interest, so there's that as well. As far as what we have available right now, Gambit does have its charming points. The Seiyu lineup is really interesting, bringing in a lot of rising stars in the industry, and the music, although not unique, is certainly entertaining. Live Us Live Us is an original mixed media project following a dramatic story that is fleshed out through voice dramas plus music releases. There are five different artists between groups and solo artists that aim at giving color to the world they live in, one of human conflict and deep environmental issues that ended up leading to the ban to live shows. The music genres explored in this project are quite interesting with classic J-pop, K-pop, R&B, rock and electropop represented by Alphatune, Strelitzia, Zin, Unknown Order and Tape Tum. Listeners can expect a mix of stars and up-and-coming talents in this project, although not all have singing duties. Those include Toshiki Toyonaga, Yoshiki Nakajima, Shogo Yano, Shugo Nakamura, Shun Horie, Yukihiro Nozuyama, Yohei Azakami, Yuki Inoue, Kohei Yamasaki, Chiaki Kobayashi, Haruki Ishia, and Seiichiro Yamashita. It seems that out of all projects launched in the second half of 2021, this is the one that attracted the most attention from 2D music project fans. I dare say it is because of the addition of K-pop music to this project. Still, if you want to check a project with an interesting story and equally good cast, Live Us could be the thing for you. Versus Ambivalence a survival 2D idol project. Now that's something new. Versus Ambivalence is a 2D music project by Nizista, best known for Handed Anthem. It has a pretty unique format in which only 7 out of the 14 members will make it to the final group. Each Seiyu voices two characters and by the end of the votings they will be voicing the one character that was most voted out of both. And who votes? You. And do you have to purchase a CD to get the serial code to vote? No. Versus Ambivalence wants everyone participating and voting freely for their favorite characters. This alone is refreshing because most 2D music projects want you purchasing something to have access to a voting slip. Then the cast is pretty interesting, mixing experienced CU with up-and-coming talents. The cast includes Shintaru Asanuma, Makoto Furukawa, Chiaki Kobayashi, Reio Tsuchida, Tasuku Hatanaka, Kengo Kawanishi and Ayumu Murase. Versus Ambivalence theme song Go My Own Way was partially unveiled in September and is going to be released as a physical single later this month, but there's already a lot of excitement for this project, mainly due to no one really knowing which characters will be in the final seven-member group. If you're into EDM and pop music, Versus Ambivalence arrives to fill in that need for you. Visual Prison A disclaimer, there may be unpopular opinions going on in this section. As always, please do check the projects yourself to assess if you enjoy those or not, and please remember that opinions are that opinions. Well, there's no denying that this is the most hyped up 2D music project of the year. However, I believe it shouldn't have been. There are, in my opinion, projects with far better music, albeit not with a cast as star-studied as this one. 
Elements Gardens Noriyasu Agematsu, renowned composer that you may know for his involvement in the music composition of some of the most iconic Utapri songs, as well as the one helping out with Dance with Devils and Ghost Concert, created in collaboration with A1 Pictures and Aniplex Visual Prison. The announcement made me incredibly excited for it because it stated it was about Visual K. Visual K rock music would be the main focus. When was the last time we got a full-on Visual K 2D music project? Oh, yes, last heard in 2017 with Fly Me Project. It's been a while, so I was pretty excited. The keyword here being was. Because after listening to the music, I don't believe Age Matsu's ambition to create a dark fantasy world with the beauty of visual K aesthetics and sound was achieved. It was close, but it doesn't feel like the real thing. Still, my curiosity is piqued, so I'll continue to check the music because from time to time, Age Matsu ends up composing genius songs. Since I don't watch the anime, as the story didn't spark any interest in me, I can tell you how far the anime production went with embracing visual K aesthetics or exploring its concepts. For all I know, the anime is about vampires that sing during a red moon, and that's all I really need to know. It sounds shallow as a premise and far from celebrating the rich culture behind visual K. Still, Visual Prison's music is a good introduction to visual K, especially if you know nothing about it and want to get to grips with it, at least to learn a bit of the aesthetics, some of the themes explored, and how music can sound like. Although, please do have into attention that Visual K music can be of any genre, from heavy metal to kawaii and EDM. However, after almost a year teasing everyone, Visual Prison's music is not quite up there in terms of quality to what Osiris, Phantom Iris or even Medicode and Drink Me have released. So yeah, Visual Prison looks cool, may sound cool, but ultimately the impression I get from it is that this is a really shallow approach to Visual K. I seriously had massive expectations for this project given the names joining it, the cast, and the fact that Visual K music was a central theme, what we got so far is a light version of it, all wrapped up in Bishonens to make you forget that something is amiss. Quite possibly it's Soul. Enlight Tribe Although Enlight Tribe was announced in 2020, the franchise's bands only kicked off their activities in 2021. This is the 2D music project that I believe many people have been sleeping on. And Light Tribe is a full-scale 2D rock music project by Muvik, with a big focus on character development. The focus in the story seems to not only be about the lack of freedom, but also a battle between classes with the three bands part of its lineup, representing each part of the social stratification. In and Light Tribe, only the vocalists of each band perform the songs. With two CDs each, the three bands in its lineup, Femme, Shifties and Esmeralda gave you more than enough reasons to check this project out. A hidden rock jam filled with shredding guitar riffs, some of the most intense bass lines I've heard in 2D music projects, and an assortment of refreshing vocals by Say You That, despite not being extremely popular, are incredibly talented, showcasing more than once their technique, control and skills as rock frontmen. If you're into rock music and love 2D music projects that put the spotlight on voice actors that you don't usually find helming these types of projects, yet have an outstanding quality, then Enlight Tribe is really a 2D music project well worth checking out. Visual Karma Anything that is rock or Visual K related is usually my thing, but Visual Karma hit a lot of wrong boxes right off the bat. The project launched with a name that, according to copyright laws in some countries, would consist in a confusing name that would betray expectations of those that, by mistake, would think it was Visual Prison. Literally, Agemats could sue them because of that. Then, without even a song performed by the cast, only a snippet of what sounds like a really awesome song, still no vocals, 
they start to be extremely aggressive with merchandise sales. If there is something I've learned while working as a marketer and PR specialist is that you never, ever try to make a sale without showing what you are about. Is a preview of a song without vocals and some artwork enough to have the loyalty of fans and thus have them purchasing merch right off the bat? No. And everyone working in marketing knows that that approach will not work. People will get fed up with the project before it even takes off. And as you can tell by all the projects I mentioned up until now, Visual Karma may only be known for having a confusing name with the more popular Visual Prison project. This is frustrating because Visual K Rock is a staple in Japan when it comes to the rock panorama. It's a fascinating blend of a fashion movement with music that doesn't have a match anywhere else in the world. There have been several 2D Visual K rock bands like Medicode, Drink Me, Osiris, and even Phantom Iris. And of course, you have Fly Me Project as the 2D Visual K rock project that pioneered the movement to 2D music projects and now, to an extent, Visual Prison. But that's not even enough content about Visual K Rock. That's why Visual Karma is a frustrating project, because I hoped it would follow the footsteps of the projects I mentioned, minus Visual Prison, because a quick listen will tell you that that's not really Visual K Rock music. And then comes Visual Karma with interesting Visual K Rock music, and they decide to focus completely on merch sales. Guys, the project is about music. I believe people want to know about the music, perhaps the characters and say you, before even thinking about spending money in merch for a project that showed little or nothing to warrant people entrusting them with money. That's just predatory and salesy. And as a fellow marketer, I get second-hand embarrassment seeing that type of approach to fans and prospective clients. They are not ATMs. You don't treat them as ATMs. They'll only entrust their money to you if they like the content, if they see a worth in it. Focus first on showing content, creating a community, then, and only then, can you start pitching in merch sales, and even then, no one can guarantee you that people will actually be willing to buy a thing. Once again, fans are no ATMs. But Visual Karma staff really hasn't thought about it, haven't they? Well, they seem to have a promising premise, but as I mentioned, they have yet to premiere any music performed by the cast, so I can't say I'm too excited about it if they continue to hold back on showing more. The Last Metal In the opposite direction went The Last Metal. The project not only explores heavy metal rock music for the very first time among 2D music projects, I'm talking about symphonic and speed metal, genres that have never been explored, at least on the male Seiyuu side of 2D music projects. Contrary to Visual Karma, The Last Metal went all out with its announcement, presenting the cast, visuals and releasing a two-minute long song featuring the band's four vocals showcasing serious rock frontman vibes. They did not push any merch sales off the bat and focused on showcasing music, especially of a music genre that I believe won't find many fans among international fans, as the international fanbase leans more towards idol and rap projects. Still, the effort is there. Look, we have symphonic metal and it absolutely rocks! Did you notice speed metal in here? Perhaps lyrics that hint at the story of revenge? What about say you performing aggressive rock music? Vol Productions really focused on showcasing their hard work and it showed in all materials they shared with the media and general public. This is a project about authentic heavy metal rock music, with a focus on character development and with a revenge story at its core. So far, so good. 
The Last Metal is a 2D music project with a lot of promise and I really hope people actually follow and support it as the quality is there, the vocals aren't the same old that we know and love, instead bringing in unexpected yet incredibly talented names to the main cast. And let's not forget, this is the first time heavy metal music gets the spotlight. As far as rock projects go, The Last Metal is my favorite of 2021. This is the music I love and have listened to for decades, and it is awesome that there is now a project that actually caters to my tastes. Dragon's Bite. What happens when you put Seiyu, cooking, music, and the romance of the three kingdoms in the same place? Dragon's Bite appears. This is one of those 2D entertainment projects that happens to have music at its core, but in no way it is stated that it is a 2D music project. Because of that, the franchise may have released nine main character songs, however, none were released on CD, so it is rather hard to keep track of the project and its releases. The cast for this project is mainly comprised of up-and-coming talents, Takeo Otsuka, Tetsue Sumia, Daiki Hamano, Takuma Nagatsuka, Yuki Sakakihara, Yuichi Hose, Kohei Yamasaki, Shugo Nakamura, and Tatsumaru Tachibana. The project struggled in its first months to gather some attention due to its format and concept, however, it got a massive visibility boost when a couple of months ago, the franchise welcomed a new group, led by Soma Saito and including Kento Ito and Takuya Gucci. The music is more about the cooking than the iconic story. Still, there's an interesting mix of heavy rock and EDM going on in this project. Really, do check Rosso Corsa's songs because Shugo Nakamura, Daiki Hamano and Tatsumaru Tachibana absolutely rock the stage. Additionally, in case you're curious about the project, they have several videos on their channel that have drama parts and music to give you an insight on each character in this franchise, so there's that as well, that makes this project fairly welcoming to the most curious people out there that, at the same time, want to save money when checking out new projects. I'd suggest you to give this project a shot, it is weird, its focus is a bit all over the place, with too many things going on, but the music is so, so good. In 2021 we got more 2D music projects than in previous years, however, this time around many were focused on music and drama instead of being mixed media. The big focus on story is a good plus for those that love to immerse themselves in the lore that later on influences the songs that are released within those franchises. I can't help but to notice that many of the 2D Idol projects launched in 2021, regardless if with a star-studded cast or not, weren't that well received. The music industry is currently saturated with many projects of similar nature, and as such, even those that stray a bit away from the norm are put in the same bowl, and people end up ignoring them. Unless you really are incredibly passionate about 2D music projects and follow everything there is out there, I've got to commend you, that doesn't sound easy. Or you write about most of these on almost a daily basis like myself or The Hand That Feeds HQ, it's quite possible that some or even most of the projects I've talked about are a complete blur to you. And believe me, that's perfectly fine, 2021 was jam. Packed. And with these, you and I wrap up this talk about the 2D music projects that were launched in 2021 and took the spotlight for themselves. These were just some of the various projects that graced us all with music for all tastes, with exciting performances or even with unexpected approaches to the music genres we know and love. You have from the big budget projects like Visual Prison, Charisma House and Tokyo Color Sonic, to the lowest budgeted Live Us and Gambdoll, and in all these projects you'll find quality on the vocals, perhaps new seiyu to follow as some of the projects I mentioned have rookies or lesser known seiyu in their ranks. 
and plenty of music to choose from. I'm more of a rock music fan, so The Last Metal and Light Tribe, Visual Prison, Visual Karma and to some extent Tokyo Color Sonic and Dragon's Bite were the projects I was most curious about. The Last Metal shows a lot of promise and Light Tribe is a sleeper that deserves more love and well, Visual Karma doesn't have anything to offer at the moment I recorded this episode. Aopella is also another project I am fond of. Much because you have Sayu in their purest state, showcasing their voices without any pretting up or distractions going on in the background. For fans of dance music, Station Idol Latch, Gamp Doll and Versus Ambivalence and to some extent Live Us and even Tokyo Color Sonic are well worth checking out. For fans of pop meets hip hop, it seems like the oddball Charisma House may end up catered to you, even to some extent Gamp Doll. From what I could tell in 2021, although idol projects are still a thing, if you pay closer attention, hybrid idol projects are emerging. What do I mean by this? 2D music projects in which pop isn't the only music genre. Tokyo Color Sonic is adamant about its mix of music genres, much like Perfection Noise, and Aopella doesn't even have a fixed music genre besides everything being performed in a cappella. At the same time, it seems that rock music, more particularly Visual K rock music, is making its comeback with two projects that, believe it or not, have similar names. I'm talking about Visual Prison and Visual Karma. Both explore Visual K rock, something that I thought the music industry in Japan, especially 2D music projects, would not dare touch again after the end that projects such as Fly Me Project, the first 2D Visual K rock music project, and even Bandiar Oze with their awesome band Oziris ended up meeting. You'll tell me that, yeah, Visual K is still here, living through Phantom Iris in the Argonavis from Bang Dream franchise. However, up until recently, that was the only Visual K rock band active within 2D music projects. And that, in comparison with the sea of idol groups or rap crews, is not enough. Heavy Metal finally got its chance to shine with The Last Metal. Venomous 8's debut song is pure quality, mixing symphonic and speed metal. And with those vocals, metalheads are in for a treat. The franchise's debut single, Welcome to the Deadlight City, is going to be released in January 2022. Rock is slowly getting the exposure it deserves, counting with interesting projects and good music to back it. I don't know about you, but I feel like 2021 was pretty nice for 2D music fans that were looking for something different from the usual idol projects. There was more variety this time around, Rock continues to gain more fans and thus attracting new projects of the same nature, and we've got new Seiyu talents joining some of these projects. Yes, the industry is saturated and perhaps some of these projects won't be around next year when I make the year in review features, but let's appreciate the effort to bring in variety to an industry that up until recently was all about idols. Now tell me, which was the 2D music project launched in 2021 that impressed you the most? What do you love about it? Which songs do you recommend everyone to check? Let me know in the comments and remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Say You Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail Say You and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Say You Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.